I think something has been wrongly assembled on this device um, originally in the factory. Uh, let's have a look. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, we've got here still the um, Vegety signal tracer. Now while I was editing the previous video I realized that uh, I didn't do much productive in the last video. I just waffled a bit about the device itself, how it operated and we tested some tubes and some capacitors and resistors and whatever but I <laughs> and I powered it up and that's everything basically everything I did. So I'm gonna try to be a bit more productive here. Um, so I have been working on it uh, quite a bit. Um, what I also did is I completely uh, redrew the schematic. And the reason is, in the last video, um, I'm, I'm, you might still remember that I noticed a couple of differences, differences between the actual circuit and the schematic as it is uh, here in the service manual. So I just decided to, since it's not a big circuit anyway, to completely redraw it from scratch. And well, I have to say, I found a couple of differences. I can put the original schematic on the screen, uh, but this is the one uh, that I redrew. Um, and the main differences I found are all in the yeah in the power supply section. And there was also quite a bit of resistors and capacitors that have different values. But the schematic is exactly the same for the rest of the circuit. But in the power supply section, there are a couple of differences. Um, so the main difference is here uh, when um, you come out of the rectifier tube, then the resistors, they are swapped around. On the original one, you first go through a 1K resistor, um, and then you take there the B+, plus, um, the first B+, plus, let's call it, and then you go to a, a series of two parallel, a series of two parallel resistors, no, a network of two parallel resistors of 1K, so a 500 ohm resistor, to get the second B+, plus. Th those are swapped around. Um, also, um, the caps here, they are 16 microfarad. On the um, original schematic, they are 50 microfarad. And we have here uh, two 8 microfarad caps, which are not there on the... Well, there is one of the two is there. Um, the other one is not on the original schematic. And um, there is... Yeah, the, the power supply section is slightly different. And then, well, let me show you here. So here you see I corrected the values of the resistors and the capacitors and there are quite a bit that are either not there or they are there where they are marked as not while they are marked as not being there. Um, so and there are quite a bit which are uh, of a different value. So that's making things rather interesting. But the most interesting part um, and I I think I also mentioned it in the previous video is that here one of the anodes of the uh, EZ80, so the rectifier tube, is not hooked up. Um, that means basically that only one diode of the two diodes is used and the EZ80 is used as a half wave rectifier instead of a full wave rectifier which it normally is intended for. And here on the original schematic, you can see that that yeah, see both of the um, anodes they are hooked up um, to both um, sides of the secondary winding of the power transformer, which is center tapped. So that's actually how it should be, I think. Now in this case here, this side of the secondary winding is hooked up to pin six of the EZ80, but pin six is a pin which is not connector or not used or an internal connection for the EZ80. So it's it's not a pin that should be used. It's just doing nothing. It's floating there basically. It should be pin 7. If you look at the data sheet of the EZ80, you'll notice that the anodes are on pin 1 and pin 7. And here, <laughs> yeah, we are connected to pin 6. Let me show you here on the device itself. See, so this is the EZ80. This is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5 and 6. See pin 6 there is connected and that's the secondary from the transformer who's coming in over here and pin 7 is... Yeah, there is nothing connected to pin 7. See, it's, it's just not connected and I think... Huh, I don't see any markings here on this pin at all. So it wouldn't surprise me if this was never connected and this was just hooked up incorrectly as of the factory. <laughs> um, the result obviously is that we're only using one diode of the EZ80, so we only have a half wave rectifier and we have only two um, capacitors to of 16 microfarads only to smooth out the, the ripple here and that's definitely not gonna be enough. Okay, so I, I have the signal tracer running. Um, I am measuring now 241 volts DC on the B+, right after the um, EZ80. So, um, over here, basically. And this is quite low. You should go here to a, through a 500 ohm uh, dropping resistor network and then you should have 250 according to the original schematics and we only have here uh, 240 uh, volts at the moment um, so let me show you what that is on the scope because I'm now measuring also just after the uh, rectifier on the scope and see that's what we get we've got a ripple of almost 100 volt <laughs> Um, at obviously 50 Hertz um, so that's quite dramatic right now uh, I think I think we should just be able to swap that to pin 7 and get a really decent uh, full wave rectification I can also measure here on both uh, taps of the secondary so then we are here at pin 1 See, and there we measure 289 volts AC. And here on pin 6, which is like I said, a non-connected pin. And we measure there 297 volts AC. Um, so there is a small difference, could be due to the fact that one is being used and the other not. The center, that could also be because of the center tap not being completely uh, centered, basically. Uh, because I, I was measuring uh, between uh, that side of the winding and the center tap and then between that side of the winding and the center tap. Um, so yeah, I think if we move that side of the winding of the transformer to pin 7 of the EZ80, that should, should work. That should work. I, I'm gonna do that and then obviously we'll power it up and we'll closely watch the voltages and the B plus and see how everything changes if it improves. I've also noted down here, I've made quite a bit of measurements and noted down the voltages here on the original schematic and we'll see how far we get by uh, swapping that yeah, to a full wave rectification. Okay, so I uh, swapped the inputs coming from the uh, transformer to pin 7 here. Um, and I'm just gonna power up uh, the signal tracer again now I have the multimeter here on the output of the EZ80 and I'm just gonna power it up again very slowly uh, because I changed something in the power supply um, I have a what is it in total 40 plus 60 I think I have 115 watts here uh, at the moment so I'm just gonna reduce that no 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 no, no. I think I have uh, 80 plus 20 no, 60 plus 25 is 85 plus 15, 100, so I have 100 watt, watts here at the moment. I'm um, just going to start with the 15 watt bulb, um, just to check if we don't have created any shorts. And I don't think we have... It's at 40 volts, drawing... 2 watts um, so I'm just gonna up and add 25 watts no I don't I haven't created any shorts I'm now at 140 volts that should be enough for the EZ80 to start conducting let's see what we get here now 
yeah, it's starting to conduct. And um, wow, it's already working. At 140 volts going in, we have here, uh, after the EZ80, we have 185 volts coming out, and that it's already great, I think. Oh no, let's just be a bit more careful. Let's add in a 40 watt bulb. So then I have 40 plus 25 is 65 plus 15 is 80 watts. Yeah. Okay, we are at 195 volt going in. And I have 270 on the B+. And that's already 30 volts higher than what we had before. Um, with 220 volts going in so that that looks much more healthy um, let me see here also what we have where we should normally have 250 volts here remember um, the last time I also showed you that um, see here so you have the, the B plus being generated over here and then the 250 volts is also on a socket, so you can use the signal tracer, uh, the signal tracer, yes, as a uh, power supply. Um, so we know that they, we expect to have 250 volts over there, um, and that's this socket over here, and I believe it's that pin over there. Yeah, <laughs> okay, it's exactly 250 volts. But see, so now I think we might be a bit high because um, I'm only at 195 volts going in. So I think we're going to have to swap maybe these resistors because um, see, originally we have here, well, that is how I, uh, how I have it in my signal tracer. See, we have here two uh, 1K resistors, which is a 500 ohm resistor going to there. And there it is, we have the 250 volt, and then we have a 1K resistor over here to drop it even further. Um, the thing is, here we have it the other way around. See, so there we have a 1K resistor, and then another 500 ohm resistor, and then we have the uh, 250 volt output. Now, um, I'm still only at 195 volts going in, but let me connect the scope again and see if we have a less of a ripple now. I think we won't have a 100 volt ripple anymore, right? Well, it's... Better, but honestly, I expected a bit better than this, but okay. Um, we have a 60 volt ripple now. Alright, um, so these two guys here, they have been swapped um, because the original ones, they were slightly out of spec. Um, not by a lot, maybe like 15% or so. But yeah, my personal threshold is 10%. If I measure something which is more than 10% out of the specifications, then I'll swap it. There are also some other components that have been swapped. I've been doing that in the meantime before I, uh, yeah, between... The previous video and this one so this uh, capacitor has been swapped these two uh, electrolytics over here and then a couple of resistors um, so i marked these in red on my um, schematic over here um, so you have here both electrolytics on the uh, cathode of the ecl82 and the ef86 these are quite well out of spec so they were they were really shot. So I uh, replaced them. Um, then you have here. This was a paper cap. Um, that one was also very <laughs> well out of spec. 
Um, and then you had here the two anode resistors, so the one here of the triout of the ECL82 and the anode resistor on the EM80. Um, these are also almost always um, gone, so if you uh, are restoring a tube radio and you have a magic eye like an EM80 or an EM84, um, always check the anode resistor, chances are quite, hi quite high that they are also out of spec. Usually it's like 470k or a 500k uh, resistor. Um, and then obviously now I also swapped uh, this one, no, uh, this one here, the 8 microfarads ones, these two guys over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see what happens if I put 220 volts uh, on the on the input? Um, see what we get then. Um, okay, so I am now measuring. Oh wait, let me just measure here the first B plus. So that's uh, over here. See, it's, it's basically the same, um, it's about 250 volts and there is 196 uh, going in. Let's see if we can get it to, to 20 volts. Yeah, so this is more or less 220 volts that is going in there right now and I have 284 volts on uh, that B+. So, um, over here, where we should normally have only 250. Um, and let's see what we get after the boat dropping resistors. So there we get 239. Um, okay. Now I was thinking, what if I uh, swap one of the 1k resistors from here to there? Then um, nothing will change as of here. So for the most of the amplifiers, yeah, for the entire amplifier circuit, nothing will change because you're still having a one and a half k drop. Um, but here we only we have then a, a one k drop, and then um, we can go. Which now we have there two hundred and eighty three. So here it will be lowered because we will go from 283 to 239. No, it's it will be in between uh, 283 and 239. So it might make sense to move one of these resistors to there, so that we have here, yeah, uh, a voltage which is more in the ballpark of the. 250 volts that they measure over here and then also for the EM80 we will have a bit lower voltage than the 280 that I have on there right now That might make sense. So let me try to do this Okay, so I um, Swapped these around and I also used this opportunity to tack them in a bit better and have a physical connection here They were just tacked in with some solder and that was all, everything that was keeping them in place so um, I swapped one of the resistor to this side and then I attached these two uh, properly um, let's see what we get here now in terms of voltage on the B plus okay again to be 100% sure that I didn't do anything wrong or I don't have any shorts um, let me just start up with a 15 watt bulb again um, it's drawing two watts um, that looks to be fine let's go up in, in restriction we're now at 150 volts going in more or less we should, st should start seeing a B plus over here this is after the first dropping resistor, which is now only a 500, no, a 1K resistor. So instead of a 500 ohm, um, we are now dropping with 1K. Okay, so we have audio already, so the amplifier is working. Um, let me go up again. So 
so we are now at 197 going in yes and um, before we had 250 here at this um, input level of and now we are 224 so that's looking already a bit better um, let's see if we can get an input voltage of 220 this is 215 yeah, that's 2.15. Maybe if I do this. That's 2.20, 2.21. And see, we got here 2.52 at 2.22 volts going in. That's perfect. Uh, because we want 2.50. See, this is what I now have on the output. So if we would put in 250 vo 2.20 volts into the uh, signal tracer, we get here after this first... Uh, 1k dropping resistor we get 252 that's great actually um, so that means we have 252 here now on the on the socket as to be used as a power supply man this is really interfering with my cell phone okay so I just put my cell phone in flight mode that should be a bit better um, and let's see what we get after the second uh, dropping after the second pair of dropping resistors if I'm correct um, we used to have 239 after all the dropping resistors and here we have 230 now um, yeah that's honestly not bad let's see what we get if we go even higher in input voltage because okay I'm now doing 220 volts but obviously um, today we have 235 here on the mains so if I go to 225 or 235 sorry so this is 232 going in right now I have 240 here and on the first B plus I have 263 honestly that's pretty okay um, it's not bad to have a bit higher voltage here on the socket because if you're you want to use it as a power supply um, it's not a regulated power supply in there, so it will drop a bit, right? So, um, this is honestly not bad, because um, if we would have left it like it was, we would have had 280 or something like that on the first B+, and that's really close to the maximum limiting value of the EM80. Um, I think that's 300, so I'd rather have it like this. Um, then the EM80 is a bit less stressed as well. Um, so honestly, I believe that the power supply is now fine as it is. Um, I'm just going to do and check a bit more some voltages here and there to see if everything is fine. And if all tubes are in their specifications, but I think it should be fine. Now there is one more thing something that we didn't discuss about a lot yet and that's this square wave connection here um, in the last video I just read what was in the manual and the manual is very unclear about what it is actually doing I think it's because it's a translation from French and I read the Dutch manual um, so I just said it is like an input for a square wave but I didn't go further into detail then someone in the comments mentioned that it's not an input, it's an output with a square wave on it. Um, and then I started looking at the schematic. And let me show you how it works basically. So here we have the output with a square wave. That one is coming from over here. Coming from the plate of the 6J6. And here we just go through the to the B+. And the 6J6 in this case is used as a um, generator for the square wave. More in particular, this is a multivibrator circuit. And I, according to me, I'm, I, well, I'm not an expert on these types of circuits, but I think it's an A-stable cathode coupled multivibrator. Um, so it's using both triodes of the tube, um, which are in oscillation with each other to create a square wave. So what is happening basically is that um, one tube one one tube is, goes fully open. Um, this creates a uh, drop in voltage on the 
uh, grid of the other tube, which causes the other tube to go fully open and via the common cathode bias, this then shuts off the, uh, this, the first tube and then yeah, it goes back and forth all the time. So that creates a sort of square-like, or in theory it should create a square wave function, but yeah, theory and practice, they're always something different, but um, that create, should create a sort of square wave-like function here on the plate of the, the left side um, uh, yeah, triode here. So we can have a look at this at the scope and see what is actually coming out here. So I have the scope connected here. Sorry for the beep, but as soon as I connect the scope here to the output, the, the beep of the square wave is just yeah, radiating into the rest of the circuit and uh, it's amplified by the amplifier, uh, by the signal tracer. And I don't have a volume uh, button on the signal tracer, so I cannot disable it. Um, so I have the scope now connected here to the square wave output. Um, see, so that's the... Uh, this is the square wave connection, this is the shielded output, that's the 6J6. And if I look at the scope, we have something which resembles a square wave and it's actually not bad. Um, the, the manual states it's around 1 kilohertz, but we have 1.7 kilohertz here, so that's not totally accurate. And we have a amplitude of quite a lot actually. You'll see. See, we have like a 42 volt square wave coming out here. Um, and this is, yeah, I have the probe now AC coupled, so it's probably also offset. Let me see. Yeah, see, so it's uh, 20 volts offset, so the, it's, the peak is at um, 65 volts. We have a 44 volt square wave. So, yeah, um, now. I don't know, I'm gonna connect, disconnect this because of, it's annoying. Um, now, what you can do with this, I don't really know. I don't really know a use case. Again, I also, also like I said in the last video, if you know some really nice practical examples for this, let me know. Um, it's a 40 volt square wave, seems quite high, um, so it's definitely not like line level or something. Um, yeah, if you have any suggestions on what you would do with this, let me know. Okay, I gave the signal tracer a bit of a clean. And it turned out not too bad, actually. It's looking acceptable. Now, as I already mentioned, um, this is not going to be a restoration. Um, the goal of this project is to just get it working and get it as a rela reliable test equipment on my workbench so yeah I gave it a decent clean also the chassis has been cleaned quite well um, and it turned out pretty nice it's quite okay um, I also cleaned the switches so this um, yeah, attenuator selector switch and this sensitivity potentiometer, they both have been cleaned. Um, I don't think I already mentioned, but all the resistors have been checked. Uh, there were a couple that I found that I have replaced. Um, one on the cathode of the 6J6 for the square wave circuit that has been changed. Um, and now in the end, all the electrolytics except the filter can has been changed. I do think that these are still quite okay. Um, anyway, they do their job. We don't get a lot of ripple. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and it seems to be still working. <laughs> I didn't break anything, see. It's still working fine. So, um... Then we have still one major thing left to do, that's for the next episode, then we're gonna make the probe, um, because I don't have the probe uh, for this signal tracer. Um, I do have an old uh, oscilloscope probe over here that I don't use anymore, um, and that you can take apart quite easily, um, so that'll do. 
Um, I think we're gonna replace this connected with a BNC plug and then I can just connect the probe up here to this connector and fit inside um, the little circuit that they um, mention on the schematic here with the diode, the resistor and the capacitor. Um, so that's for the next video. Um, and that's about it I think for this signal tracer. So next video we're gonna make the probe and actually try it out on a radio once I have the probe. Um, so that's it. Um, so then I hope I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like my content don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.